Hey guys, what's up? Good evening. So a couple of you guys had asked me about what I was doing with Unity and um, I just, I, I kind of bounce, you guys know I bounce in between stuff and I'm building stuff all the time. What can I say? It's actually interesting because I was reading about programmer burnout and I'll probably do other videos on that. But um, I, I guess I, I, in some ways I, I concern myself in a sense that I'm like, man, maybe I program too much, but I'll be honest, I've been programming now for like seven years and I like to do it. And um, and I like to switch things up. And I think honestly, that's how I, I avoid the burnout because sometimes during your day job, like it can be very monotonous writing, you know, bullshit unit tests over and over again. You know, whatever language it is that you're doing, I mean, there could be monotonous, boring stuff that you end up doing. Uh, but I think I kind of spruce up programming by completely playing with, you know, different technologies and things. And, and Unity is part of that. And I told you guys I would be uh, using Xamarin. I was going to focus on Xamarin. Um, and I do plan on, well, you know, I don't even know if I plan on. I messed with Xamarin for a little bit. And it's just as miserable as the last time I tried to do uh, Android development. Um, so I'll probably mess with it again, I guess. I hate the emulator whole setup. I hate... Um, yeah, I hate the whole the, the the XAML type of XML type you know layout for Android. Uh, I haven't even messed with the whole iPhone type of thing. So I will admit I am uh, ignorant on the subject of Xamarin and, and website development as a whole. Uh, but what I do like about something like Unity is number one, I can write in C sharp. Number two, the community is great. Number three, it's free. And uh, did I already say I could write in C sharp? Yeah, I did. And number four, this thing does port to all kinds of different environments. So if I want to, you know, cater towards Android and iPhone, you know, I could probably have an easier time doing that on this platform, I would say, than maybe Xamarin. I, I, yeah, I'm just kind of throwing it out there. I don't, I don't know if that's actually accurate or not. But all I know is I, I like what I, you know, with, with what I see with Unity, and I've, I've been messing with it for quite some time, really years, um, kind of jumping into it, jumping out, jumping in, jumping out. So, um, I think. I think the learning curve is somewhat high um, just because there's so many different little toggleable options and a lot of what you, you see on the web is outdated. Um, so it's constantly outdated and you, you need a decent amount of C sharp experience, I think, in order to be really effective. Uh, but then again, I'm also a beginner on Unity. But what I want to demonstrate to you guys here is that uh, I basically have a, uh, you know, an idea of, of the mechanics and, and the game and all this stuff. And I really don't want to release all that information until it's actually finished. Uh, but what I will show you here is that um, when I jumped into Unity really earlier this week, I think it was like a Wednesday night, and I said, you know what, let me hit up the Unity store. And I just started grabbing all these free resources. And to date, all I've done is pay $10 for a model because the model that I bought, it would take me literally years to become that good in order to make something like that in, uh, in Blender or... Um, you know, one of those other animation and 3D programs like 3ds Max or something. Um, th now, those programs I have spent some time in. In fact, I have a uh, learning Blender in 30 minutes, which I think is relatively effective for a complete noob when it comes to um, models and things. And, and in that, that tutorial, actually, in 30 minutes, I explained a lot of the basics of how do I actually mold something and then also how do I do UV unwrapping. With UV unwrapping, I find to be a complete pain in the ass, but uh, I feel like that tutorial was pretty well done. Um, but that said, every time I jump into 3D modeling, I always quickly realize that I'm never going to be like this 3D model expert, and nor do I really want to be because it's it's kind of like at a completely different side of the industry. It's like those people should be really good at that, and that's what they choose to do, and they like doing that. And then there's people like me who want to build cool stuff like that but know that I'm probably never going to have enough time to devote to it. And that it would be taking too much time away from actual programming. And then you probably have 3D modelers that were like, damn, I just wish I was a better coder. Um, that's just my guess and assumption. Uh, but let me go ahead and, um, and explain. Let me give you a demo first. All right, so these are all free assets and just a $10 model. Uh, so when I start the game, you can hear some music and everything. Once again, I think I spent like an hour and a half on Wednesday night and then a couple hours last night messing with some more of the mechanics. And that's all I've spent on this game. So... Uh, the fact is, is that the Uni Unity community, I should probably just do this demo real quick because you can hear the music in the background. But take notice of my crab, how he's moving. And he looks very, very professional. He's a snow crab. So you got options. You can move this. Ain't there? He's moving around. Um, so if I go to start, I'm loading another scene. So it's a two scene game. And this is just a free environment, but I have the ability to jump. Um, here's my crab over here. It's a little bit choppy because of the screen sharing and everything going on. 
Uh, but you can see he looks healthy. He looks uh, looks pretty. And you notice the trees are blowing. There's going to be some uh, wind effects and everything. Um, now, some of the mechanics that I actually specifically wrote just kind of monkeying around with this is um, like when I press enter, blocks are going to start randomly falling from the sky. So I'm using prefabs and stuff like that. It's just a standard block. I actually created the, the block model as the, the standard block model from uh, Blender when you start it up. Uh, but then I, um, I create a prefab from it. But I uh, created the, the fundamentals here with the Raycaster where if I click on an object and I hold it down, it's going to turn the object yellow and then I take the color off. And you can see each uh, prefab block has its own uh, gravity and stuff. I can even drop it on that guy. And I can stack blocks and everything. Um, now one of the things I wanted to do, you can see I got some uh, weirdness with my mechanics and everything. But one of the things I end up wanting, uh, I will want to do, is actually have the blocks stick together, very similar to the way Minecraft is. Um, because even though Minecraft defies gravity, it's not very realistic, at least it's a decent user experience. If you guys have ever played Minecraft, it's pretty addictive and fun. Uh, but there's going to be a point to this game. And then here you see that uh, I can turn the music down. In fact, I probably should have done that as I was showing you guys this demo. But... Um, the point is, is that there's so many free resources in Unity, and you know if you do make some cash on some of these free models and setups, you know give give some of that back, you know for goodness sakes. Like if I ever made money on this, which I don't expect to, I think it's going to be a terrible game. Um, this is something that I've actually been brainstorming with my son, who talks about, uh, you know, we we actually planned this game out a long time ago, and this is something that I'm just like slowly getting to. Uh, but I'm hoping, you know, in the next maybe couple months that I'll have something released. It's going to be terrible, but uh, the, 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 the goal is to actually get this released to multiple different platforms. I know it's not going to be accepted to Steam or PS4 or anything like that, uh, but I, I plan on having the mechanics be relatively simple. And then, honestly, one of the things I would like to look at is the virtual reality, because I went out and I bought the PSVR. I have this, uh, this Oculus VR, the VR, like the headset for my phone, not the full-fledged Oculus. But VR is something that I'm very interested in. I think it's really cool. And, um, and the fact that Unity actually supports that, I'm not sure what kind of hoops you have to jump through, but the mechanics of this game are going to be so basic that I feel like if there's going to be anything I could ever port to something like virtual reality, it would be something like this. Um, and I'll explain more, I think, in the coming months. Um, one of the things I meant to do is I actually... Actually, this is working quite well. I was going to lock the cursor in the center of the screen, but I actually like the ability to to move the cursor around. Anyway, all right, let me go ahead and, and stop the, the demo here. I want to show you, number one, um, the, the entire UI, the user interface there. So, you know, dealing with, you know, pressing escape and, and dealing with controls like uh, volume and things like that, that is a free uh, download that, that you can just download from Unity Store. So it's completely free. Like, it, I basically toggled a few things to basically say, um, that I have more than one scene and, and tell it to actually load scene two. Or really, it's scene one. Um, so I can show you. So you can see here's the scene. So if I look at the actual uh, game or the scene, I look around, you can see it's got a first person controller. These are all just built in uh, Unity things. So I didn't even have to do a lot of the scripting for the first person controller. I did end up adding some scripting which actually uses the first person controller in order to look at the objects and use a raycaster to figure out where they're pointing to and things like that. Um, here is uh, what I call the sand script in order to, um, th this is a prefab, so this is actually what's taking the, the prefab object and putting a, a box collider on it so it doesn't fall through the map and all that stuff. and. Uh, that's what I'm doing there. I have this uh, this box script. Now this is actually where it's uh, taking random positions here. So this is all written in C sharp, guys. So I have, you know, my variables declared up here at the top, and um, the start method runs one time. But here you can see this is um, there's a click sound. Anytime you click on an object, um, a click sound is is actually rendered. Um, but you do that through an audio source that you attach to um, this this box script here. And you can see here, I just basically I'm setting, you know, if, if I'm dragging, then that means it's going to move that object to wherever I'm, I'm dragging. As soon as I release, 
then you know I mouse up then I'm actually telling it to uh, the drag here I got some commented out code but the, the the whole thing is that it's very easy here I mean here I'm setting the actual object color to the yellow color which I define up here um, so this code isn't like anything that I'm trying to actually show you guys as like impressive because this is literally something that I spent a few minutes with in fact the code that I wrote to actually turn the blocks yellow was from a different game that I just ported over here. So I just ported over the entire code. But here's the Raycaster and stuff that actually figures out where you're pointing to and where you know how I'm debugging out to the screen and everything. So you know, for the most part, this uh, this stuff is all very basic. Uh, but that's what's great about Unity is just a few hours and some basic stuff, man. Um, you can really get a lot of stuff going here. Um, so I'm using the Game Jam UI menu, so that's a free asset. Fluvio here, I actually, I need to get rid of this, but um, I need to, I need to get some fluid and um, like uh, fluid dynamics, and I feel like that's going to be relatively difficult. Here's my snow crab. He's got all kinds of animations. In fact, he he comes with like a character controller, so you could actually control the crab if you wanted to. Um, that's not really in the cards at the moment. Um, so what else? Okay, here's the island. So the island is all um, free resources as well. And oh yeah, I got some game sounds. So here's game sounds. Those were free. And then the actual game music. There's all these game music stuff. So really, I'll probably uh, if I do get this thing closer to completion, I'll probably pay for for better music um, and more beachy type theme music, which you could still buy for like five or ten bucks my goal is to actually buy all the resources for this game for less than a hundred dollars i'm not sure what it's going to cost to actually distribute it but once again i fully intend the game to be absolutely terrible it's going to be very very basic and it'll probably get bad reviews and i'm not trying to be negative i'm just trying to be real like i don't have a ton of time i my goal is to, to get it out there, not to be a complete pile of crap, but I do, it's just gonna be very, very basic. You guys will see, I'll make another video in like a month probably and show you guys where I'm at on it. Um, but that's really it. Uh, so definitely check out Unity, man, it's, uh, it's fun. And yeah, that's about it, guys. Uh, so that, that's all I got tonight, man. T check it out, let me know if you all have questions and Make sure you subscribe and vote up the video and share it with your family. I'm just kidding. You don't have to share it. But anyway, guys, talk to you later. Good night. Hey, guys. So a lot of you ask me, how do I get my foot in the door to become a programmer? And I just want to take a moment to mention Dev Mountain Coding Bootcamp is a 12-week intensive course that focuses on the technologies of the here and now for web development. Uh, some of the things that they're actually teaching in this 12-week course, it's geared to get you into the, the industry by focusing on things like jQuery, Node.js, React, Angular, how to use GitHub. So a lot of the things that you're going to need to do as a developer, as soon as you start, they're going to be teaching you in this, in this coding boot camp. And the entire goal is to be able to get you into the industry within 12 weeks. So if you guys are interested in learning more information about Dev Mountain Coding Boot Camp, just check out the link in the description tab of this video. Thank you for watching and have a good day.